Hey, we're back with part two of our conversation with Jack Blades of Night Ranger, uh, Damn Yankee, Shaw Blades, you name it. But rock and roll history, he's talking about it now. Hey, Jack, you know, another album that you played on that most people might not know is Molly Crew's Dr. Feel Good. How did, how did that happen? Which is, which is, a, which is a, a, a grooving album, man. I mean, you know, Dr. Feel Good, that song kicks, man. I don't care whether you like the crew or not. I happen to like the crew. Um, but I mean, that's that's a rockin' tune, dude. That's a great album. That's a great album. How did you guys get Eric Sherman involved? We hang with the best people. Here's what happened when I'm um, when I was on Doctor with Doctor Field. Vince and I, um, Vince Neal and I, have been really good friends since like 1984. I met Vince shortly after um, that car crash with Razzle and everything like that, and and we became buds. And 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 all through, you know, while we were recording albums, I mean. Motley Crue would be coming to our studio just like, you know, we're all going crazy down in Hollywood and stuff like that. In fact, they're in videos in, in um, the Secret of My Success video that the full one section is Vince Neil, Tommy Lee and Weird Al Yankovic playing trumpet in the middle. And they're all like faking it and doing all this stuff and doing all these hand motions and all this kind of stuff. But anyway, when, when Night Ranger broke up in like 1989, we just decided like everybody go your own way, whatever you're going to do and all that kind of stuff. You know, I was like, you know, I called Vince and I said, man, I'm just, you know, I'm just, I don't know. I'm, the band's over. I don't know what's going on here. And Vince said, well, we're in, yeah, Vince said, well, we're up in uh, Vancouver, you know, recording an album. And um, why, don't you, why don't you come up and hang out for a few days? So, uh, you know, I, you know, Molly goes, hey, go for it. So, so I fly up there. I, I move into Vince had a two bedroom um, um, flat there in the Vancouver and so we, we just hung out and said, that's when Motley, Motley was like, everybody was sober. I got to cut you off here, Jack. It's your 43rd wedding anniversary. You obviously have been, you know, the, the, the consummate, you know, riddle that's the rock star that stayed with one woman and he's been around, you know, everything that there possibly could be. And you're now rooming with Vince Neil in Vancouver. <laughs> and I'm trying to understand how this all worked out. Vince and I just stayed up all night talking and, and stuff and just, you know, talking about life and everything like that and just figuring stuff out. Went down to a, a tattoo parlor one time and I'm like, hell of it. I'm going to get a tattoo. I've never had a tattoo. This I'm going to get a first tattoo. ink ever. Okay. Yeah. This yeah. is my first ink ever. I'm going to get a tattoo. And I, I'm in there and Motley had brought up their tattoo dude that was in LA and he was like, he's like inking up um, um, Tommy's arm and stuff like that, doing the whole sleeve and everything like that finishing up and everything. And I'm walking in, I'm like, You're the newbie. This is it. Yeah. I'm getting a yeah. tattoo. I'm with the crew. I'm with my buddies. I'm getting ink right now. And Tommy and Vince, they both went, Tommy Lee was like, dude, we're not going to let you get a tattoo unless we call Molly. And she says, it's okay. Right on. Like, what the, I mean, are you guys kidding me? This is like, we could do whatever. And it's like, dude, we're not going to hear it from Molly. So they literally called up my wife. They called Molly and Molly's like, he can do what he wants to do, whatever he wants to do. And by then I was like, eh, you know, I'm like, oh, okay. So what, what what'd I you do? go with? Nothing, nothing. <laughs> I just said, ah, forget it. So Walked no out ink to this don't... day, by the way? No, no ink? To this day, no ink. But I'll tell you what was great. We were up there and um, we sang on, um, on Sticky Sweet and Same Old Situation. And yep. on Same Old Situation, it was, it was around the mic. It was Vince Neil, um, Brian Adams, wow. um, Steven awesome. Tyler, and me all singing on oh, uh, on those sweet. two songs. Yeah, yeah, because uh, because uh, Aerosmith was doing uh, I don't know like uh, like Pump or something like that in the studio right next door in the same recording studio. So you're talking about Vince Neil, and you're talking about Stephen Tyler, and and I'm I'm I've heard some story that's either been contorted and is true or is not true that dude looks like a lady is some reference to like Steven Tyler, like, you know, riding in an elevator with Vince Neil, or am I making this up? I'm not making this up. This is what I'm hearing. Any- Eric, you your thoughts? Us? Yeah. That's a hundred percent true. I mean, the song Dude Look Like Lady was written by Aerosmith, who you've written a ton of stuff with. <laughs> Very cool. And listening to you rallying off, you know, Brian Adams and, and, and Vince Neil and, and the whole crew. I mean, you come from, and I, I can't say this enough, and I'm, I'm, you know, not only did we grow up on, on the radio, and I need to ask you why there's no rock and roll radio anymore, but, but it's the golden age of, of, of the rock musician. It's the golden age of the record companies. It's the golden age. We'll talk a little bit about the business of this, but, but there was never a time where you had this confluence of MTV's going wild. Um, people are trading in their vinyl for compact discs, but they're buying the same stuff. Um, and, and you guys are really front and center. And, and I don't want to 
you know, we, we, we're, we could glorify this all day because you truly are a rock legend. Um, but talk about, you know, what that time was like, because if, if you look back on it now, you recognize how, how much the rock industry has changed. It was great. What are you going to say? It was, it was awesome. Everything, everything was every moment, every day, everything, everything that you could think of and that anybody could dream about that would happen and anything like that happened and did happen. And it was true. And I mean, tour stories. I mean, we're driving on a bus in the middle of the night. Yeah, there you go. Thank you very much. Are you guys serious with this? I mean, look at that. <laughs> well, one time, one time we're on a that tour bus. That is fantastic. Bus. One time we're on a tour bus and we're driving down the the highway and, and down south somewhere, something like that. And there's a tour bus in front of us, and we get up on the on the mic and 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 on you know the CB radio back then. They didn't have cell phones ringing like this is like eighty eighty four, I think it was. And 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 like our guy hit the other guy said, "Who's in that bus up there?" And the guy said, "Ozzy Osbourne." I got Ozzy Osbourne, and we said, "Brad." Come here. So Brad comes flying up and he goes, get Ozzy on the phone. It's Brad Gillis. And it's like, it's like he, Ozzy, get, they get Ozzy on the CB. And Ozzy's like, Br- Brad, Brad, is that you, Brad? And it's like, oh, yeah, man. Ozzy, it's me. It's Ozzy, it's me. And we're all like, oh, this is great. And then, and then the next thing he clicks and, and Ozzy goes, who's got the drugs? <laughs> and then we go, and we, and we go, we do. And all of a sudden you see the red lights in front of us on the tour bus go, yeah, uh, it's just we went on his bus for hours afterwards. And we all, you know, t- toured, and then they went one way and we went one way. We had a great. I mean, stuff like that happened all the time. I got a question for you, Jack. So, you know, I love the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I've never been. I want to go, but when they do the, you know, when the HBO carries it or whatever, you have to watch it. So, I think you would agree that you know, none of your bands maybe warrant. Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, but you as an individual, what your contributions to rock and roll absolutely do. Could that something like that happen? You know, Jack Blades get inducted to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame for the, the myriad of contributions you've made in terms of your writing and in terms of the bands you've been with. Eric, get on that one, will you? Yeah. <laughs> no, but it's a legit question. Head up that project, will you? You know, that is a good, I mean, I, you know, whatever. I'd, I, I'd love, I mean, I just, look, man, music is my life. It's everything. I live, eat, sleep, dream. I mean, at any given moment, there's a song in my head. You know what I mean? Right now, I don't know why Hurt So Good from Mellencamp is in my head right now, but it's driving me nuts. I, I know Night Ranger sold, I don't know, 17 million albums. I, I, what, what, how many did, did Damn Yankees sell? And I mean, do you know what your total number of record sales was through, throughout your career? Because I mean, these are, these are staggering numbers. Yeah, probably like, you know, 25, 30 million at least or something like that. Damn Yankees sold millions. And, you know, of course, Night Rangers sold millions. And then all the records I've been on and, and all, the, all the music that I've written that's been on million selling records, Aerosmith, Get a Grip and, you know, Ozzy and, the, you know, Alice Cooper and Cher's Greatest Hits. And I mean, who would have known that Tommy and I would, would write a song that was on the same album with I Got You, Babe? You know what I mean? Shares. Yeah. yeah. I, mean, I mean, go figure. You know what I mean? So, I mean, it was just it was pretty wild. I don't know. I don't, you know what I mean? It's just, I know I still get good royalties. So that's what counts. It's a very challenging, difficult, painful time in our country with the virus and the riots. And, 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 uh, and, and frankly, you know, for, for a lot of rock bands, um, these are dark times. I'll tell you why it's dark times. Because there's no music. Yeah, because no kidding, people man. don't have music. Music is the only thing that is the universal language that unites everyone. I don't care who you are. I don't care what persuasion. I don't care if you're, what color your skin is. I don't care what, what political affiliate. I don't care. It's music. And we don't have music right now. And what do people expect? What do they expect when there's no live music? When someone can't go and just smile and listen to a song that they grew up with and, and just feel great about life and feel great about song and just singing it out. What do people expect? That's what's going on right now. So the quicker we get music back and the quicker we get live shows going in this country, the better this country is going to be and the better this country is going to heal. That's my prescription.